I maintain that Zimbabwe is one of the most wonderful places in the world. It is visually spectacular and it is full of the friendliest and most amazing people you will ever meet. But it's not always the easiest place to live. And today I'm not talking about things like stolen Zessa cables or power cuts. No, I'm going to be talking about the actual act of living here, as in immigration, getting the necessary paperwork. A lot of you folks have asked me questions about this, about how I went through this process and how it works, perhaps so that you have an understanding yourself, but ultimately I've shied away from this because it's not a visually interesting video. There aren't many photos or b-roll sections I can put up for the simple fact that a lot of the process involves visiting government agencies or police stations where you can't record or take photos. So we're going to do this anyway, I'm going to be just me and the camera talking to you folks about how this process works, so at the end of the video hopefully you better understand what it takes to live in Zimbabwe. Ahoy there and salo banani! I'm Captain Benzi, also known as the Bulawayo Buccaneer, and on this channel I talk about my life as a British immigrant living in Zimbabwe, the trials, the tribulations, the things I love, the things I struggle with, and hopefully you'll enjoy following me along for this journey too. If you do enjoy the video or find it useful, please do hit that like button, it massively helps me out, subscribe if you haven't already, and ding that notification bell so you never miss an update. Otherwise, let's get right to it. Now the first thing to talk about is temporary visitation. Obviously the first time I came to Zimbabwe, way back in June of 2016, was as a tourist. I was working for a travel company in the UK, they sent me out here on an educational visit to see some of the properties that we were selling to our British clientele to get a better understanding of what we were offering those customers, thus better be able to sell it, right? Now, arrival in Zimbabwe is pretty straightforward. Some countries, I'm looking at you Russia, can be very difficult to visit if you are coming from outside of the country and you don't innately have the right to be there. That visa process can be complex and difficult, clandestine almost. Zimbabwe, it's pretty much just a fee on arrival. And if you check out the Zimbabwe embassies or travel documents and guides and things, they will just give you the amount that you need to spend. It's usually between 30 US dollars and about 60 US dollars for a single entry, but then you get things like double entry where you can enter the country leave and then come back. Very useful if you wanted to go across to Zambia or Botswana or wherever like that for a day trip. But for the most part, it's pretty simple. You arrive, you show your passport, and you just pay in US cash. Now, last time I was at Victoria Falls Airport, they still weren't taking any form of credit or debit card. You did have to pay cash, so bear that in mind. But for the most part, entry into Zimbabwe is just pay up front on arrival. Pretty straightforward. And ultimately that's what I had to do when I finally moved out here at the end of October in 2016. I knew that I was coming into Zimbabwe with the intent on living here, but because I can only apply for that stuff in the country, I had to start off on a traveler's visa, a holiday visa. Now officially those only last for 30 days, so it's well worth noting you will have to do that multiple times as you go through the immigration process. As I was providing the documentation required to live here, I did have to extend my passport visa twice. So it went from 30 days to 60 days to 90 days. And that does come at cost every single time, which, yeah, I guess that's part and parcel of the process, right? I was living here as someone married to a Zimbabwean, or rather I wasn't at the time, but for me to actually stay in the country, I needed to get married. Carrie and I needed to get married. So we went through the entire marriage application process. I had to go to Harare to get documentation showing that Carrie was eligible for marriage and that she hadn't been married before, wasn't currently married. And I had to do the same in the UK. I had to provide documentation that showed I was not going into a second marriage whilst still in the first one kind of thing. If you are cohabiting with someone, then having a marriage certificate is a very useful thing because it immediately says, I am married to a Zimbabwean, that 
makes it kind of nice and easy and you can skirt around some of the other problems that you may have had otherwise. With the marriage certificate in hand, I could head down to immigration and start to apply for a residency permit, a spousal residency permit. For this, I had to prove that ultimately there was good reason for me wanting to be here. Carrie and I had to go through like an interview that basically we were separated and answer a few questions about each other and our reasoning for wanting to be together. I had to fill in a few forms and write a few letters from the head of immigration, this kind of thing, explaining that I, as a British immigrant, was looking to move to Zimbabwe in order to be with the woman I loved and to help provide and support her. It's worth noting at this point that a spousal visa does not include the right to work in Zimbabwe. That is a separate thing that we'll talk about in a moment. That application process took about two to three months. There was a lot of backward and forward with the immigration office, finding the right details, having to write letters in very specifically worded ways, like a single spelling error or use of the wrong word meant scrap that, back to the drawing board, rewrite it. And they weren't particularly helpful about this, if I'm being completely honest. They tell you what you kind of need to do, and you would go and do it, only to come back and be told, that's not good enough, it needs to be more like this. And you couldn't just sit there and say to them, look, can you just tell me what I need to write? It was just like, no, it needs to be a letter explaining this. And so it took us three or four attempts before finally we got a letter that immigration was actually happy with. My passport was taken from me and sent off to her and a few weeks later, two or three weeks later, um, I went back to the immigration office, the passport had arrived, and inside it was a brand new stamp that would last for two years. Now this entire process cost about 500 US dollars, and again, this was paid for in cash. It also required me to go and get my fingerprints done at the nearby police station, which again cost additional money. I think it was $25, $30 we had to pay uh, for the forms and to get a police officer to actually correctly put my fingerprints on the paper. A lot of the time that we took with that was just the simple back and forward of not being told exactly what we needed to do, so do be prepared for that. Immigration will say you need all of these things, but they won't give you the exact details of everything you need, which does lead kind of to this little guessing game going on. Fortunately, renewing a spousal visa is a lot less involved than getting one in the first place, which does, I guess, kind of make sense because everything's already on file, right? Essentially, every two years, just before my visa is about to expire, I have to present myself at immigration, pay the cash to get it renewed, and then again, it's just a waiting game. I will go down to immigration and check whether or not the sticker has arrived. I then give them my passport, they apply the new sticker in there, they they fill it in for me and it's all done and dusted. Nice and simple, nice and easy, but of course this does mean you need to have a passport ready ahead of time. I had just updated my passport in 2015 before moving out here, but if you are moving to Zimbabwe, I would strongly recommend updating your passport in your home country ahead of time to give you the full 10 years or however long your individual country's passport lasts for without having to then update it here in Zimbabwe because that's a whole new rigmarole. Having to go all the way to Harare to the British Embassy to get a passport sorted? Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. When we were in Victoria Falls, we made friends with one of the immigration guys who we have on WhatsApp. So when it comes to renewing the visa, we WhatsApp him, double check what we need ahead of time, and then just provide it to him at the immigration office. Most of the time that was in Vic Falls. This year, obviously, this was done here in Bulawayo. Now, I mentioned that the right to abode in Zimbabwe, the spousal visa, does not automatically entail the right to work in Zimbabwe. That's a separate thing which is covered by a works permit, and this was the difficult one to get in Zimbabwe. Essentially for a works permit, again, this is done through immigration. You have forms that you need to fill in and your prospective employer has forms that they need to fill in as well, which includes basically providing your curriculum vitae and against two, at least two other curriculum vitaes from Zimbabwean residents. Your employer needs to essentially explain why they need you rather than local Zimbabweans. And I kind of understand this. I can appreciate that essentially Zimbabwe wants Zimbabweans to get the work first and foremost, rather than just importing workers from across the world. 
I was working for a travel company, or rather I had applied to work for a travel company in Victoria Falls, and thus I had to go through them. They wrote me letters detailing how I was going to work for them, why I was the best option, and they went through the entire process. I didn't actually have to pay anything myself out of this. I believe the company had to pay a $500 fee for this, and I have heard stories of other people who have moved to Zimbabwe that had to pay that themselves. And like with most things regarding immigration and customs, you pay ahead of time, regardless of how successful you are. Fortunately, I've not really heard of many people being declined on this. Take that with a grain of salt, for sure. But for the most part, it seems to pretty much just be pay, fill in the documentation, and things should be okay for you. So the first spousal residency permit has cost us $500, and that started in February 2017, by the time the process had been finished, that's when it kicked off. That lasts for two years, so that carried me through to February 2019. Now, we actually started the process for renewing that in November of 2018, just to be way ahead of time. Everything was done in plenty of time. That then kicked off February 2019 through to February 2021. Then in January 2021, we renewed that, and that's going to carry us through to February 2023, which is where we are now. Of course, I could just go for another two years, and that would cost me another $300 every single time, but it kind of made sense to go for the permanent residency. You are eligible for permanent residency in Zimbabwe if you have been living here for a full consecutive five years. So it made sense that rather than go for another $300 now and then $300 again in two years time, we pay the $500 now because this lasts up to 10 years. Essentially, it's another sticker that goes in your passport and it lasts the full duration of that passport. Because my passport is due to expire in 2020, 25, I'm going to need to renew my passport and then pay $100 to get that sticker transferred into the new passport. But still, $500 now and $100 again in two years' time that will then last a full, a full 10 years made a lot more sense than doing $300 now and then $300 again in two years' time and so on into infinity. We contacted our guy in immigration and fortuitously, he has been brilliant. He just kind of said, okay, send me these bits of documentation I'll do all the rest. We needed to gather again a full set of fingerprints from our local police station. That's a bit of a rigmarole because you can't just go to the police station, pay them the money and get the fingerprints done anymore. Oh no, you have to go to a local bookshop. They won't necessarily tell you which ones to go to. You'll need to ask around. They will have the forms that you can buy. Unfortunately, those, uh, those forms were literally a dollar each. We needed four copies. We went down to our local photocopying shop. They had the forms for a dollar each. Take that to the police station and get all of my fingerprints redone. That then needs to be paid for, and you can't just pay for that at the local police station either, because nowhere had the receipts. So we had to drive around four or five different police stations here in Bulawayo to basically show them we've had the fingerprints done, please can we pay you and you give us the receipt documentation that we then send off to immigration in Harare. That is then all put in an envelope along with a letter again to the head of immigration explaining that you are applying for a permanent residency. That all gets sent off to Harare. The gentleman there is going to be sorting all of this for us. So again, this is the kind of thing that when you are there at your first set of immigration, when you're going through that first process for the spousal visa, find someone that you can talk to and will run you through it. Don't be ashamed to say, look, I'm struggling with this. Please, can you help me? And that's what we've done. This guy has been fantastic. I don't honestly know if we could have gotten through this as simply without him, because it's just a case of, hi there, this is what we need to do, what do we need? And he will give us a full documented list, and if we have questions, he will help explain all of that as well. And that's essentially all there really is to it. It's a complex system, but if you find someone in immigration willing to help, it can be made a lot smoother. It's a pretty Byzantine system with a lot of labyrinthine paperwork, 
But if you can sort of break it down step by step, then absolutely it is doable. It's just a little bit confusing without someone to guide you. There are probably ways to come to Zimbabwe not with a spousal visa, but honestly, those I would know nothing about. I know that you can get a work permit and then go for a working visa, but again, that requires the company that is hiring you to have ful filled in all of this paperwork essentially ahead of time because you're not allowed to apply for a works permit whilst on a holiday visa. That is a specifically explicit part of the holiday visa terms and conditions. You're not allowed to work, you're not allowed to seek work. For us, it was a case of getting all the marriage paperwork done ahead of time. I came out here on a holiday visa, I got married, then we extended the holiday visa, I got my spousal residency permit, then with the spousal residency permit in hand, once the holiday visa had expired and I was now on the spousal visa, I could then get the works permit. That has allowed me to earn whilst in the country. Then each two year period, I renewed my spousal visa for the cost of $300. And now that I've been in the country for five years, I can apply for the permanent residency. I believe that citizenship can be applied for at 10 years. There are pros and cons to this that's something I may cover closer to the time. Hopefully this has given you an idea on how this situation works. Again, I apologize that there's not much exciting B-roll footage or images throughout this, because simply put, I cannot take those because of government agencies and police stations and they get really, really quite aggro if you pull a camera out. If you do have any questions on this, please feel free to ask. I can answer to the best of my ability, but be aware that of course I am not an immigration officer. I can only speak from personal experience. The best thing to do is of course to get in touch with your local embassy. Speak to the British Embassy about in Zimbabwe about how this works. If you're British, if you're American, look for the Zimbabwean Embassy in America. Contact them. A lot of them have phone numbers, Twitter accounts, email addresses, places that you can get in contact with them, or a full website full of information that should give you a brief understanding of what you're looking to do. But of course, don't be afraid to phone ask those questions and really get involved with it. Ask as much as you can. The more information you have, the better prepared you're going to be. Anyway, folks, that's just about everything for today. Thank you so much for watching. Really enjoy answering your comments and speaking to you all about this kind of stuff. Hopefully it's been useful. Otherwise, thank you for your support and see you all next time.